In April, the minimum wage will increase again. With a little over a month left, are you prepared? Pay increases may seem easy enough, right? But have you thought about other employees asking for an increase as well? Or what to do if you need to notify your staff about this change on the 1st of April? Stick around because we're going to get into everything you need to know, and especially the things that aren't as widely spoken about. Hi everyone, welcome back to Lawlands. My name is Sanam and thank you so much for tuning in today. That's right, we are back at it. April is just around the corner and that means another minimum wage increase. But this time around, with the adult wage, it is increasing only by 2%, which is a refreshing change for many employers out there, I am sure. And this is in comparison to a 48% increase over the last eight years. I may say refreshing change. It's still an increase, but at least it's not as bad as what we've seen in the past. Now, before we get fully stuck into it, I did want to mention that I have been getting a lot of people reaching out, and that is one of the most amazing things that has come out of this podcast. Thank you so much. Thank you for taking out your time and lending me your ears. Uh, Another thing that has come out of this podcast is being able to meet really impactful and knowledgeable people in the employment law and HR arena. And last week, I had the absolute pleasure of meeting one of the best people in HR, Lisa Young, who is not only a beautiful personality, but is passionate about HR for HR professionals. Last week, I had the pleasure of getting to know her mission and understanding how she wants to help managers and employers really develop their leadership, advisory, and ER skills. It's really commendable. And she holds these workshops and she's created this community where HR professionals can work through problem solving and scenarios and have Q&As to tackle these issues they are facing, as well as that support. So to that community that's listening, because I know you are, thank you so much for the overwhelming response last week. Everyone has been so lovely. Thank you for listening, for reaching out and for connecting with me on LinkedIn. I am just so absolutely grateful that you have taken out your time and even just taken that extra step to reach out. So thank you so much. And if you're dealing with the pointy end of HR, I really feel like someone like Lisa Young will be a great asset. And this is a great way to get your ideas and what you're going through sense checked and to to learn and to grow and develop as a community. So definitely check her out. I'll leave all of her details in the description, as well as her LinkedIn and her website. Plus, definitely check out her website because she has a lot of freebies. And I love a good freebie. I love a good bargain. And this is the best one that you can get because it's free. So definitely check that out. Now, it's been a little while, so we've got to do a Laughs with Lawlands. If you know what this is and you've been here for a little while, then you know that it's where I give you a dry joke in these episodes. I got fired from an orange juice factory. I just couldn't concentrate. (laughs) When I read this one, I really enjoyed it. And today's episode is going to be short, so there's not much need for concentration and we won't be talking about terminations. How positive. <laughs> it's all about the minimum wage and how that's increasing and with a slight increase. So like I said, a refreshing change. Currently, the minimum wage for adults is $22.70. And that's going to be changing to $23.15. So that's a 45 cent increase per hour. So not as bad as what we've seen in the past. Interestingly, the training wage and the starting out wage, it's still going to be kept at 80% of the adult minimum wage, meaning that the wage rate for that will be changing from $18.16 to $18.52. So it's still quite high for somebody that's starting out brand new in employment or somebody that's just training up and that needs a lot of guidance. But this is the cards that we've been dealt and we've got to navigate around that and work around that. If you want to know which wages will apply to your younger workers when it comes to that starting out wage or that training uh, minimum wage, then please check out 
my previous episode. I will link that in the description. That breaks down where an employee sits in terms of starting out or training and then when they tick over into going into that adult minimum wage instead of being starting out or training. So have a listen to that one. I really break it down. I break down the responsibilities of these young workers, but I know in certain industries, retail, hospo, it's very normal to have younger employees. So just make sure that you've navigated that correctly. Now, keep in mind this new $23.15 for the adult minimum wage and the $18.52 for that starting out and training minimum wage. Keep in mind that these are all wage rates before tax, before any deductions like PAYE tax, student loan repayments, all of that kind of stuff. So keep that in mind. The question is, how do we prepare for the increase? Because a lot of times what happens is we go, the minimum wage is changing. Okay, cool. Everybody that's on the minimum wage, they get an increase. So during increases, everyone focuses on the increase, but nobody actually focuses on how to handle the increase with your staff. But that's why you've got me. I wanted to sit down and just go briefly over some things to consider that might not be as widely spoken about. Maybe it's just an industry practice or an industry standard. The first thing would be notifying your employees. It's really important to let your employees know that are on the minimum wage that they are going to get an increase and what the reason is behind the increase as well. So There's not this assumption, and I know this is going to sound horrible, but that they're getting an increase because of some performance-based thing or something like that, unless that's what you've implemented in your workplace, because you just don't want to have mixed messaging there. The best way to do it is to have something in writing. Like I said, you are changing the contract now. And let's say last year you also issued them with the letter, the contract stays as is, then you need to issue them with a letter again this year. It doesn't always have to be a letter can be an email, but something in writing, something should be documented to tell the employee, look, as of this day, your pay will increase. The reason why it's increasing is because the minimum wage is increasing on uh, 1st of April. And to meet legal requirements, we will be increasing your wage rate. Now, if you have any employees at this stage that are on the starting out or training wages, it's really critical to double check what they should be getting. So whether they need to move on to that adult minimum wage or whether they can stay as is and just shift over to the new wage rate for the starting out and and the training wage. Once you have that sorted, once you've figured that out, that will be your understanding of who gets to move where in terms of the increase and then how to navigate that. Put everything in writing, like I said, doesn't have to be a letter of variation, but it should be in writing document the employment, have clear communication. This is the best way to be able to do it is to put it in writing. Now, the next thing I would suggest in terms of preparation is also check your payroll systems. Make sure that your payroll systems are all on board with these changes and that the increases have been put in and that there isn't anything lapsed there in terms of the increase. What I really wanted to get into and why I said it's important to have a community like Lisa Young's community, because There are certain things that come up which don't get spoken about. And there are two specific things that I have seen in my experience doing employment law that come up time and time again every year. And it's in those industries like retail, hospo, where people can move around quite easily and you see skill shortages. The first thing that would come up is do I need to give my employees a pay rise? If this is happening for some employees in terms of a minimum wage increase, do I need to give everyone a pay rise? The second question that would come up is how do I handle people asking me for pay rises? People chatter. There's this talk that happens in the workplace. So I'm going to break these down for you. The first one, like I said, was do I need to give my other employees a pay rise? No. The answer is no. You legally do not need to give other employees a pay rise just because you're increasing the minimum wage for certain employees. Now, unless you have some sort of policy or clause in the agreement, which I will always say, make sure you have a look and double check, unless you have something in there that suggests that you need to give pay rises during this particular time, or that you have some sort of policy in place that says during April to June, that's when pay rises will be considered, 
Unless you have something like that, you will not need to legally give anybody a pay rise. But check your agreements just to make sure. The second one is the one that gets a little bit trickier. Keep in mind with this one, it's all up to you. So this is all up to you in the sense that there is no legal requirement, but it's how you want to handle your business. The second question is, how do I handle people asking me for a pay rise? So you have a couple of employees here and there getting their minimum wage increased, and all of a sudden, word gets out, there's a bit of chatter, and usually during this time, employees will speak to each other. Now, you can set the expectation well beforehand that as long as there's some clause in the contract that says, hey, you need to keep all these things confidential and not discuss pay and all of that information, you can definitely rely on that and remind people. But what happens during this time generally is that word gets out. So it's up to you on how you want to handle it. What I would say to you is there is no legal requirement here to give people pay rises unless you have some sort of policy or something in the agreement. We know that now. But what you might want to consider is the potential impact on your business because of pay relativity. Now, what do I mean by this? I mean that there needs to be, usually in a workplace, a very distinct gap between your junior employees and your senior employees, right? That keeps everybody happy because they know that the senior employees come with a lot more experience. So they know that they need to be well remunerated for their experience and their expertise and the fact that they don't need as much coaching and training and guidance as a junior employee. If your junior employees, let's say you've got some on that starting out wage, now they're ticking over to the adult minimum wage. Let's say that your junior employees are now going to be sitting at that $23.15 and the, you have some senior employees that are sitting on $25.50, for example. Then the question comes up, should I be paying my senior employees a bit more because I need to show that gap still exists. And that's where you really need to think how much this will apply to your business and whether you really need to consider this. Because it's important to consider the employees that are on the higher wages because they possibly may want to negotiate a pay increase to show that there is a relative difference with their experience compared to a junior person. But increasing the pay is not a legal requirement unless it's stated somewhere in, and documented and signed off in writing. Because it's a competitive market right now, that's why I bring this up. Because time and time again, this specific issue would come up whenever there were wage increases in the workplace. So the first thing in handling people asking you for a pay rise, you need to figure out if it's something where you'd want to consider a slight pay rise. The issue that I saw a lot of times was somebody would say, this person's getting a pay increase and they're just one year into the job. I've been here for five years. I deserve higher pay. And the person down the road is offering me an extra dollar. So I'm going to go with them. And because of the competitiveness of this market, it is sometimes boiling down to 50 cents to a dollar. You don't need to be strong armed into giving a pay increase. So if you want to stick it out, stand your ground and say, no, no one's getting increases. This is only because certain people might be getting increases because it's a legislative requirement. It's a requirement under the law now. Stick to that. But if you want to navigate the other areas where people are saying, hey, I need to have a higher pay, then it's more so for you to sit back, look at your business, budget it out and see if that's going to be an option. And the best way to do it is just to prepare for it. Prepare for any kind of pushback. Prepare for somebody raising that this is not okay and that I deserve to be paid more. Well, that's it for me, everyone. Thank you so much for listening to, to everyone. Feel free to keep reaching out to me. I absolutely love it. I really appreciate the sweet and kind words that you have been sending my way. I hope you have a lovely morning, night, evening, whatever it may be, and make sure that you stay empowered. Thanks, everyone, and I'll catch you in the next one. 